Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics, a place where you can improve your understanding of physics with confidence. In today's lesson, I will explain you some questions about kinematics and measurements. All of these questions are from Cambridge AS Physics past papers. This video will help you to improve your conceptual understanding of kinematics and measurements. Here is our first question and this question is simply asking us about SI base units as you can see here SI base units not quantity so often students they get confused with units and quantities so actually there are seven SI base units and seven SI quantities as you can see here uh, in this column, we have SI quantities. As you can see, the length is a quantity. Its unit is meter. We have mass is a quantity. Its unit is kilogram, time, seconds, temperature, Kelvin, electric current, amps, luminous intensity, candela, amount of substance both. So these are seven SI base units and seven SI quantities. So we need to be quite clear with this one. If we are clear about these seven SI base units and quantities, then this question is very simple to answer. So we need, simply need to find out SI base units, the pair of SI base units. So if we look at amps, this is SI base unit, but Joule is not SI base unit. So answer is not A. Uh, Coulomb is not SI base unit. Second is SI base unit. If we go to C, SI, KG is SI unit and Kelvin is also SI unit. Meter is SI unit, but Newton is not SI unit. So our answer for this question is C. <laughs> For this question, we simply need to understand what exactly is one micrometer and what exactly is one gigameter. So first of all, let me explain to you what is one micrometer. So this is one micrometer. One micrometer simply tells us that it is equal to 10 to the power of minus 6 meters. And one gigameters is simply equal to 10 to 9 meters. Now, if we have this understanding, if we remember what is micrometer, what is gigameter, then simply we can answer. So as one micrometer, we simply understand one micrometer and this is divided by one gigameter so one micrometer is simply equal to 10 to minus 6 meters and one gigameter is simply equal to 10 to 9 meters so if we just simplify this one our answer will be 10 to minus 15 meters so our final answer is d <laughs> For this question, we need to find out what gives the value of a body's acceleration. Means how we can find acceleration if displacement time graph is given, velocity time graph is given. So as you can see in all these options, we have velocity time graph and displacement time graph. So we need to understand how we can find acceleration of a body if graph is given to us, simply if a graph is given to us. So first of all, let's try to understand what is acceleration. So acceleration simply is equal to delta V over delta T. Or we can also say that this is equal to rate of change of velocity. Uh, rate of change of velocity. As this is the rate of change of velocity, we can also say that uh, we can find acceleration from the gradient of Vt graph. Means from the gradient of velocity time graph, we can find acceleration. So this is simply what you need to understand. So in this case, our answer is... <laughs> First of all, let's try to understand what is given to us. For this question, it is given to us a stone is dropped from the top of a tower of height 40 
meters. A uh, stone falls from rest and air resistance is negligible. What we need to find, we need to find the time taken for the stone to fall the last 10 minutes to the ground. So this is very important. We need to understand the last 10 minutes to the ground, not the total time taken. So the best way to answer this question is first of all, sketch. So we can simply sketch this one. Let's say this is stone. It is dropped from this point. Its initial velocity is equal to zero. And let's say ground is here. This is ground. And you can see as the distance is given, the height is given is 40 meters. So it simply means that this distance is equal to 40 meters. So we can simply say this is equal to 40 meters. We can also say this is S. Now at this point, it is also given to us that 10 meters. Let's say this distance is S1 and this one is equal to 10 meters. If this is 10 meters, then we can also find out S2. So the S2 in this case will be equal to 30 meters, means 40 minus 10. So how we can answer this question? So this question can be answered in many ways. We can use different approaches, but I will explain you one, the simplest one, the simple one. So if we can find somehow what is value of V1 at this point, at this point, and also, if we can find out what is value of V2, just when it strikes the ground, then it will be very easy to find our final answer. If I have, let's say, V1, and if I have V2, so then simply we can find, simply using the formula, V is equal to U plus AT. And so in this case, uh, v will be equal to V2 and U will be equal to V1 and then is A and T. So T we will find very easily. So the T will be equal to V2 minus V1 over A. So we will find. So for A is given as it is in free fall. So this is in free fall because A resistance is negligible. So we can say in free fall. So it means that G is equal to A and that is equal to 9.81 meters per second per second. Uh, so we can also write down the unit here, meters per second per second. Now, how we can find V1, first of all? So, first of all, just look at S2 now. At this point, velocity is given, U is equal to 0, S is given. So, we can find V1. So, I can write down here for S2, uh, we can say for S2. As S2 is equal to 30 meters, so we can find out value of V1. So, simply we can find out that 2as is equal to v square minus u square. So we need to find v square. So v square in this case is equal to v1. So if we just simplify this one, we will get that is equal to 2as, the root of this one. That is 2as. And if we solve this, in this case, s is equal to s2. And our answer will be 24.3 meters per second. 24.3 meters per second. So this is value of V1. Now, the second thing we also need to do is uh, we need to find out V2. So we will say for S. For S is equal to 40 meters, we will repeat the same steps. So if we repeat the same step means 2as is equal to v square minus u square. So in this case, we can find out value of v2 that will be equal to 2as. We just need to take the square root of this one that will be equal to 28.0. So that will be equal to 20. 
8.0 meters per second. Now, as you can see here, we have value of V1, we have value of V2, so we can simply use this formula. So we just need to use this formula and we can find out value of time. So it means time is simply is equal to V2 minus V1 divided by A. So the V2 is equal to 28 and the V1 is equal to 24.3 meters per second and G a is equal to g that is equal to 9.81 and if we just solve this our final answer will be 0 0.38 seconds it means this is the time taken for the stone to fall the last 10 meters to the ground so our answer is Here is our question number five. Question number five is about uncertainties. So let's try to understand first of all what is given to us. For this question, it is given to us that resistance is equal to potential difference divided by current. And the absolute uncertainty of potential difference is given and also the absolute uncertainty for current is also given. So absolute uncertainty for potential difference is 0.05 volts and for current is 0.01 amps. Now the question is that how we can find out the percentage uncertainty in the value of R means in the value of resistance. So for this one, the main concept what we need to understand is that when quantities are multiplied, our quantities are divided. We need to add the percentage uncertainties. So this is the main concept as you can see here. So when quantities are multiplied, our quantities are divided, we need to add the percentage uncertainties. So as you can see here, absolute uncertainties are given means the delta V is given here and absolute uncertainty here delta I is given. Now how we can calculate the percentage uncertainty in resistance? So this is quite straightforward concept if you remember from our class. So delta R over R is equal to delta V over V uh, plus delta I over I. So as we need to calculate the percentage uncertainty, so we have to multiply by 100. So we need to calculate the percentage uncertainty. It simply means that we have to multiply this by 100. So as you can see, the delta V is given that is 0 0.05 uh, divided by 1.00 uh, plus we have delta I by I that is 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.50. Uh, we have to multiply this by 100 because we need to calculate percentage uncertainty. So if we solve this one, our final answer will be 7.0%. I mean, this is the percentage uncertainty in R. Percentage uncertainty in R is equal to 7.0%. So this is how we can answer. So the main idea is that we need to understand when quantities are multiplied or divided, the percentage uncertainties are added. So our final answer is C.